Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. Here we are. It's June 10th, 2016. I am doing the weekend update. A little unusual on a Friday afternoon. Why? Well, we still have 20 minutes to go to the cash close. So I'm on Pacific time. Here we are at 1240. Yes, the market here closes at 1 p.m. Pacific time. <clears throat> S&Ps right now are down 21. No, I'm not recording just because we're having a nice down day. I'm recording right now because clearly I see something in the markets and I want to enunciate it while we're still open. First of all, if you take a look at the week, all right, the S&Ps are going to end the week down, but mildly. Again, if you kind of count back, one, two, three, four, five trading days, all right, so yeah, we started the week in and around 2100. We're going to end the week, looks like just south 2100. What did we end up doing this week? Absolutely nothing, but we're ending on kind of a down note. That isn't necessarily what stands out to me all that much. <clears throat> what does stand out to me? Okay, in a very large way, is we have a number of key risk indications all are lit up right now. Now, just to back off in the S&Ps for a second, before I show you some of the risk indications that are all lit up over here, and you know, there's not that much to even recap from this past week. What happened this past week? A whole lot of nothing followed by today, which again, the S&Ps are down 21, 22 points right now. But a little bit of perspective, the S&Ps over the last few weeks have been nothing but upside over here. I mean, we have traded again on a one-way ticket to the upside here from roughly 2040 to 2120 unimpeded. So we back off a little bit today. Again, nothing too huge. If you zoom out for just a moment, then you realize, well, the reality is we've kind of traded from, you know, the February lows at 1800 for the most part to uh, to 2100 almost unimpeded and yeah, a little bit of slipping back here but we're right back inside this extremely tight range that we have been in for so long again what's a little bit unique that's going on today well number one <clears throat> let's go over and let's take a quick glance at the advanced decline line inside of the S&P 100. Correlation today is back in play. That is, we're seeing a down day where all asset classes, for the most part, are being hit. There's a couple of, of brighter spots, a couple of darker spots. But <clears throat> what I'm saying is, of the 100 largest companies in the S&P 500, that's pretty much what the S&P 100 is, right? You're seeing them broad-based selling. It's a little bit more of a liquidation. Uh, again, you look for this correlation and this snap back when we're getting some sell-side activity. All right, so we see that. We get it. One of the strongest sectors as of late, let's go over to the sectors briefly, has been energy. Energy is getting hammered today. It's down two and a quarter percent right now and if you're not comfortable looking you know necessarily these are just s p sectors here on thinkorswim yes there's a sector up what is it telecommunications and if you took the entire telecommunications sector and you put it together it still doesn't really equal the market cap of something like apple so uh that is one of the brighter spots out there but <clears throat> generally speaking we're getting kind of that quintessential all down day so all right in terms of risk over there though that doesn't really display a whole lot of risk the s p 100 should just kind of all right hey we're getting a little bit of uh again a, a little bit of correlation and that just says okay we're just selling across the board it doesn't really matter what asset class it is they're going to whack it across the board now let's state the obvious over here what's the obvious yes oil is down i happen to look more at the energy sector itself which is the xle why am i looking at that it's because i got a position in the xle and that position it's been wrong until today i mean what a difference a day makes right now, again, let's state the obvious. The obvious, bonds. Bonds have been exploding kind of day in and day out. Now, I say it's the obvious because it's all I've really talked about, you know, for quite some time here. Now, at Theo Trade is, you know, what's going on inside of the bond markets. So, let me just, again, bring this in. Let me do a contract adjusted here. Um, if you're not familiar with that, that's just for a continuous contract to get a cleaner view of the bonds. So, clearly, the bonds every day with increasing velocity you know i heard uh yesterday our own doc severson he's like the bonds have gone parabolic he's right 
I mean, listen, that's a parabolic looking chart. This is just on a three year daily, but for the most part, you know what? In the last month of trade, there's been nothing but upside of the bonds. Now, time out for a second. Forget what you might think about bonds or looking at a chart. You're like, I don't even know what a bond is. That's fine, too. The bonds, okay, in any way, shape, or form, you have to look at this as risk mitigation. This could be other countries bringing money back into the U.S. because their country is negative interest rates. I'd have to agree with that. Why would they be taking money from Japan and shoving it into U.S. treasuries? Uh, because they can't get any yield in their own country. Why wouldn't they just take their money, though, and dump it into their own stock markets? Because they have absolutely no faith in it. Any way you want to see this, this is okay. a huge red light when you start to realize, wait, what are the bonds really telling me? They're telling you in some way, shape, or form, there's risk out there. Okay, and again, I state that as more of the obvious, no matter what you might think about the bond products over there. This is people searching for what they would think of a safe yield. Mm, how safe is it? Not very, considering, again, everybody in the world seems to be piling into the bond product. So it's one of the risk flags that you look for in a market, but that's nothing new. They've been on the move for, you know, what, how many different, you know, days and weeks right now have the bonds been rallying? <clears throat> okay. So what I, and the reason I'm recording this right now, and what I've really noticed over here is some people are going to look at the VIX. Now the VIX to me is as dead as dead can be. Looking at the VIX to try to justify when volatility is coming is like an age old like prophecy thing, not going to work. The VIX though is on the move today. There's no doubt about it. Okay. The VIX is up almost 17%. With the S&Ps, I mean, the S&Ps, they, they're down right now. They're down 20, but they kind of feel like they've just kind of sunken into a warm bath of redness, if you will, in the marketplace. But there's no, like, fury to the selling over here. So why is the VIX taken off to the upside? Well, the VIX really, it's, again, this is my predecessor's volatility indicator. One thing I have noticed, the vol futures, they are on the move. Now that's unusual because the volatility futures that I'm looking at, these are not the volatility futures that expire in a few days. These are the 40-day volatility futures. I'm looking at the forward slash VXN6. The vol futures, they've definitely getting getting bit up there and they're getting bit up in a big way. There's huge contract size. Almost 100,000 contracts have traded in here. That's heavy. But that isn't the point. The point I want to make, okay, and this is one I think that we should all pay attention to for a moment, the VVIX. Now, there's a lot of people that are like, I don't even know what the VVIX is. It's another product. It's kind of like, I've never looked at it. <clears throat> well, let's take a look at it for a second. The VVIX is the volatility of the volatility index. You're like, so it's a derivative of a derivative? Yes, it's a derivative of a derivative. It's the volatility of the volatility index. What's the VIX? The VIX the VIX looks at the SPX volatility, but you see traders today, they're much smarter than that. They don't go out and use options in the SPX if they want to mitigate a degree of their risks. They don't necessarily have to use that, okay? <clears throat> What's going on inside of trade today is everybody wants to use the product, okay? That is the most effective in risk mitigation. And what that does, and again, you're looking at the VVIX, what's going on, and I've noticed inside of today's trade and the last two days, and this is huge, traders are actually going in and they're trading extraordinary numbers of VIX options. Now, the VIX options, they're not even based on the VIX. The VIX options are all about the volatility futures. What's going on in the VIX options options is which driving again what is driving the vvix and you can see there's an extraordinary number of trades that are being done in here we're up to uh, almost a million contracts it's we're doing about one and uh, 1.6 times the norm versus the previous five days right now inside of the vix options but it's not just today what you're going to see here again momentarily <clears throat> is the VVIX, which showing you is volatility is exploding in the VIX itself. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the reason I'm recording this right now, is that uh, in just 
Okay, and uh, we'll, we'll count back from you know the beginning of this week if you'd like. And uh, and again, in any way you want to look at this, the beginning of the week. What is that? Okay, right here, pretty much is the beginning of the week. Uh, we were trading at 80 in the VVIX. We're now trading at roughly 102. And the market in the last few minutes here tried to rally. It doesn't matter. I don't know exactly what's causing this. I can tell you precisely what the trade is that they're doing. Bottom line, traders are buying the crap out of volatility right now. Sorry to have to be so blunt, but they're coming out swinging. And you can look back at the VVIX, and I, I suggest, you know, do your own homework when it comes to this stuff. You look and look back at the VVIX for years, any time that you've seen the VVIX move in such an erratic manner, we've actually been met with some extreme volatility. Now, this goes back to August 2015. I don't think we're in necessarily that kind of a scenario here. But here's a situation, again, where the VIX, you know, the VVIX is all the way down at what? You know, it's, it's back in like June 2015. It explodes all inside of one day to 117, backs off a little bit. But if you looked at the exact same days, and you could do this, all right, so I'll actually open up a chart and be able to look at uh, both the VVIX and the SPX in similar time frames over here. So I can actually open up like a three-year daily over here. And you can go back and you can kind of zoom in uh, again on specific moves that occurred in given markets over here. So you start to dig back to, again, any individual days, and you'll see, <clears throat> if I zoom once again in here, here's a huge spike in the VVIX, okay? That's right in this time frame. Some fairly heavy selling in the S&Ps. This was met by a 40-point move to the downside in the S&Ps. The last time we saw a spike like this, and again, I can show you multiple spikes inside the VVIX, and every time the VVIX spikes, we were in the midst of some selling, and then all of a sudden, you know, the floor kind of drops out. But we've been seeing 40-point moves in the SPX with this kind of move in the VVIX. <clears throat> it's something you really have to consider, and I wouldn't ever bring this to the attention, okay, of, uh, of the group if not for the fact that, uh, again, doing some regression analysis on it, when you're getting the volatility, the volatility index up, clearly traders are denoting that they see a degree of risk in the marketplace. So <clears throat> then I went over to the SPX. You know, I go into the SPX and I, I'm looking out here at next week. All right, so next week, here's some six-day options. Their volatility is only 14%. There is an FOMC announcement next week, and the volatility hasn't really done much of anything. Okay, what it's telling me is that the traders, they're not out there trading, per se, the SPX puts and not trading the SPX options nearly as heavily as, check this out, if you go into the VIX options, they're looking at next week as being extreme. The volatility for next week, the VIX of the VIX is already up to 130%. All right. The volatility of the VIX, it's it's in full, like, again, there's what they call, you know, contango and backwardation over here. The volatility skew is quite inverted, though, on the VIX. Uh, what it leads me to believe, quite simply put, you better go out and, uh, again, we've been in some docile markets lately. You better go out and find your helmet because you may need it inside of the next few weeks over here. Uh, the VVIX, again, every time it's taken off to the upside, it has been met with much more extreme levels of volatility inside of the broader marketplace. I'm going to look for it here. Is it the market looking at the FOMC meeting next week? No idea. That thereafter, you've got the British exit vote. I have to tell you, the markets are down today. And in no uncertain terms, there is no news. Okay. They're ridiculously overbought. You know, you want to look at a MACD, you want to look at a Fibonacci, you want to look at a stochastic, go to town. They've come off the 1800 level in the S&Ps to 2100. We've got risk. We're starting to sustain it, right? You need to understand right now the risk in this market. It's not of us exploding up. If we go up, great. The upside, though, is limited versus that downside risk. And the VVIX is nothing more than accentuating how much risk is really prevalent out there. 
most of my positions right now. You can see my net net aggregate delta over here. So I'm a spider beta weighted delta. For those of you that speak beta weighted delta, I'm short 5,454 spider deltas right now. Sitting, waiting, possibly for a decent size move. We'll see what materializes here inside of the next week. With that, thank you guys very much for joining us here at Theotrade. We'll be back on all this coming week over here with much more specifically discussing a lot about this volatility position. Thanks again, everybody. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.